Hey everyone. Uh, hi. So I want to go over, I mentioned this in a video before, but 50-80 training and uh, 50 shots and and all that and 80%. Uh, so that this is something that I've done and uh, I used it to get ready for Derby last year. And so the, so I'll do my disclaimer first. My disclaimer is do whatever you want. Like <laughs> you can do what you want. Like if you think this is stupid or mindless or whatever, that's totally fine. Some people just don't like um, training in this manner and they want to train in their own way. And I I'm totally fine with that. We have members at the club that, that I, that uh, want to do their own thing. And I'm totally comfortable with them doing their own thing. I'm just, I'm sharing with you guys and gals what I do and what's worked for me to train and get ready for an important event in my life um, and tournament and with limited time. So I had limited time. I mentioned before, the last time I went to Derby last year, we didn't have the club. I had, didn't have a pool table in my house. There was four and a quarter diamond that was 45 minutes from my house. And so if I wanted to train on similar equipment, to what I was gonna play on at Derby, I had to drive. And, you know, with kids and, and everything I mentioned before, kids and uh, and uh, work and, and responsibilities, I could only squeak out a little bit of time for training. And I had to, I, I'm, I'm a guy that wants to train on the equipment that I'm gonna play on. It's very critical. I believe that it's absolutely essential. That's one of the reasons why I was so excited about opening the club and, and now we have like total access and it's closer to my house and come in whenever I want it's just awesome so uh, it's great but at the time this is not what I had and so what I had to do was figure out a way to maximize my 45 minute training to an hour and a half training and this is what I came up with and um, yeah uh, you know that's it and so I just want to share it with you because a lot of people are pinched for time and they don't have uh, hours and hours and hours and I used to come from a position where if I was going to get ready for an event or a tournament I would be like I need 10 hours and, and I've done that before like I did a challenge match um, before Derby last year maybe six months before three months before and I had a match one match that I wanted to win against a really good player and in front of a bunch of people and so I went to that specific table and I played two days before for probably 10 hours each day. I probably put 20 hours worth of prep in for that, those races. We played like a race to 15 or something and I think we played two races. And and so, you know, I did put in that, that heavy 20 hours over two days and it worked, you know, I played well. I didn't play perfect, but I got there. I got the cheese and, re and the redemption I was looking for because he had beat me before and I wasn't prepared. And so I came back and, and prepared. And I did not use this system to prepare because this is prior to me understanding how to train under the system. But now under this system, what I've found, this has been my thing, is that I need far less time training um, to get prepared and be hitting the ball really well. Um, of course, I need competition and I need simulated pressure through competition and all those things. But we went through all that in like the first video, I think, about the breakdown of how how you break up your time so that you can, you know, have an, enough competition and enough training. So this is only about what do I do when I train. And this isn't all that I do when I train, but this is a bulk of what I do when I train. And this is a very, very, very impactful, powerful Neil Spain powerful pool players. Um, that's right. I like the Neil Spain powerful. Um, okay, so this is what I do. This is this is this is what I find to be super impactful since I've been doing it over the last I don't know year or so. And so I just want to break it down and explain to you what is it that I do and how do I go through and utilize these things and how do I. Um, match this up with the same thing I was talking about the other video allowing me to have that learning mind open that critical mind off and to be calm and I'm in this learning state and so I will do this system and if I have 45 minutes to an hour and a half I will hit probably somewhere between 100 to 200 shots if I have a little more time maybe I'll get to the 250 or 300 range of shots but if I can do that I, I 
picked up a lot of information. I learned a lot during that process. And then I go to sleep and do the download, like I mentioned, and uh, it's very, very helpful. And this is, this is how I've been able to, uh, to help my game. And the biggest help that it's had for me is that, you know, I haven't shot up to 750 or anything like that, but it has allowed me to play at uh, a comfortable level and a high level without as much of those 10 and 20 hour sessions to do that. Like before I used to think I needed 20 hours to prepare for, for something. And now I'm like, no, as long as I can keep this consistent and I can do this over time, I can do this, um, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. I, I'm going to have good, I'm going to feel good. Like I'm going to be in a good position to deliver my game. Um, at least physically at a, at a pretty good level and for for where I'm at and and I don't feel overwhelmed with these thoughts of it's meaningless unless I can just dump all this time into my game now I realize I might not be playing at a higher Fargo rate but I'm having less time to maintain the Fargo rate level of play that I'm at like this is it in a nutshell I mean I we argue nuances but that's it in a nutshell how I'd like to explain it for me, this is how my experience has been. This is how I feel about it. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. And so here we go. Let's check it out. Um, so 50, 80 training, um, 50 shots, five groups of 10, and we're trying to go for an 80% success goal within it. And so the way that we do that is we start with a cinch shot. So let's just use this shot as an example. We start with a cue ball in the center, a ball width off the second diamond, and we're cinching this ball in and just ensuring that we can hit that at 80%. And so we'll hit 10 shots to start, and we'll look, and we'll see how we do on that opening group of 10. And what we're looking for, which is really important that I want to share with you guys, is we're looking for what side of the pocket we're going into which side do we favor just sort of naturally when we're shooting it and we're gathering that information and I'll show you how to keep track of that information during the 10 shots. And so let's say I hit this shot and I know my tendency because I've hit this shot hundreds of times, my tendency is to miss on this side, okay? So if I miss by overcutting, I take that ball, let's say I miss the one ball and I overcut the first shot, I do not put the one ball down in the rack, I put it here. So I know that I missed to this side of the pocket, okay? So I missed the one ball, and then I'm like, okay, overcut, LOL, super common. Um, and so I go and I hit the two ball, and now I overcut it again. And I'm like, ugh. So I put the two ball over here, right? And now I have data. I have data which says I'm overcutting the ball and I've overcut the first two. So then the two, the two balls gone from over here, the two balls up over here, and I know that the first two shots I've missed. And so if I want to get to 80%, the other data I have is now I have some pressure data, which is, wow, if I want to get to 80%, I got to make eight in a row. And, and so I can cause, that'll cause me to kind of stop and think, okay, like, let's try, let's see how much, we need, we need to really kind of start grinding these balls in and paying attention, we gotta be super on to make this work at 80%. And if we don't get 80%, that's fine, we're in our first group of 10, like, I might get 40 or 50% and 30% and it's, I'm not panicking, I'm just, I'm learning, right? Like, I'm just calm and I'm learning. So now we go through, we miss the first two, we overcut them, now I start making an adjustment. And my, my light goes on in my head and it says, ding, 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 I need to start aiming towards this part here of the pocket because I'm overcutting it. I need to make an adjustment. I can't just, I don't stop and say, where's my Coke bottle? I'm gonna stroke into my Coke bottle. I'm gonna solve what's happening with my physical stuff going on. No, I'm, I don't do that. And if you wanna do that, that's totally fine. That's not what I do. I'm just sharing what I do. What I do is I say, I'm not gonna solve that in this moment and I might not ever solve it. That might be a rabbit hole that I just can't figure out because I don't have resources and access to people that can break it down and show me exactly what's going on. So I gotta just figure it out. And the way I figure it out, and the way I'm sharing with you, is that I start thickening the ball up. I start hitting it thicker and aiming towards this part. And so what happens is, once I do that, 
likely what happens is I make balls and I start making the two and the three and the four and the five. So I'm down here and I take these balls and I rack them down here in the rack so they're gone off the table. So I got the two, three, four, five, six. I get on a run, I make five shots in a row and I'm like, ha ha ha, I'm feeling it. I'm gonna get 80. I figured this shot out, okay? And then the seven ball comes up and I chunk it into this rail, okay? And I'm like, shoot, there goes my 80. Kind of lost the moment, got a little bit too thick on the ball and I make a note of it. And so then I put the seven up here, out of the way, but on that side rail, so I know that one I hit thick, these two I hit thin. I also have the data of, wow, between the two and the seven, I got on a little little roll. That, that was cool. Like that's good information to know that I could you know, make a few in a row. Because now the seven's gone, I got three more. It's like, well, I know I made five in a row, so I potentially can make these last three and get stay at 70. And so I hit them and I go nine, eight, nine, boom, boom, make them in the pocket, rack them down. Now I'm at 70% and I got the 10 ball left. And I, and I go, okay, cool. I'm in that 60 to 80% range. I'm trying to get to 80. I didn't get there, but you know, now I got the 10 ball and now I can stop and I can visualize like a tournament situation. If I'm playing 10 ball or money situation, I could say, okay, let's just stop and let's visualize that this is an important shot. I want to make it. I want to make it to keep my percentage up. I want to make it because it's a visualization exercise. There's all these reasons why I want to make it. So in the moment, I'm able to have this data in front of me, like sitting there right in front of my face on the table. And it's a reminder of what's going on. I set the 10 up and I overcut it again. And I'm like, okay, fine. I ended up getting 60%. I maybe had a little bit of a nerve situation or, or whatever. And I, I got 60%, the last ball, now, now I racked that ball down here on the 10 and I realized, okay, started off weak, made corrections, ran a bunch of balls, chunked it, got out of the moment, whatever, got too relaxed on this rail, and then made the last two, the next two to get to the, to the 10 ball, to get to the, that higher percentage, and then I got on the 10 and I, I missed it, you know, and, I, and then I look at it overall and I say, okay, Three out of four of my shots were overcuts. So 75% of the time I'm overcutting that ball. So that's good data for me too. So I'm 10 shots in, I've got tons of data. I just started, I'm not judging anything. I'm not like beating myself up. I'm just, I'm learning. I'm in this learning mindset. So good, we got 10. So our first 10, we just make a note or remember in our head that we hit 60%, okay? Take these balls. I'm gonna have a black finger the rest of the day. Um, set them back up, start on the one ball, and go through it again. And we know the data we have is that we got 60%, we kinda got it down okay. We're still gonna stay in that cinch. We're not gonna change and make it uncomfortable because we haven't got to 80% yet. So we wanna be in our cinch, comfortable ball, whatever that is, if it's low, if it's high, if it's center, we just wanna be in that cinch mode until we get it to that 80%. And so we're, gonna, we're, we're still gonna stay in that cinch mode. We're gonna come on to our next 10 shots. We're gonna know that we're 10 in, and we're gonna set up the one, and we're gonna see what happens. And we're gonna hit these shots, and we're gonna know that we're gonna start grooving this side of the pocket, because we know that 75% of the time we have a, a, a tendency to overcut it. So we're gonna try to start seeing if our misses, if we are gonna have misses, if we can create our misses on that other side of the pocket. Like I'm looking now when I'm playing to have my misses over here, because I know that I can miss here, like 75, three out of four of my misses were here. So I want to start correcting over to the side and dialing towards, towards center more, right? And so I go through it again and I hit the shots and maybe this session, I uh, start off hot, right? I go one, two, three, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm like, everything's good. I got nothing on the rails. I'm hitting it. I'm grooved on the shot. I've got six down. I got four left. All I got to do is get two out of these last four. And so that creates a pressure and a little bit of stress on me when I'm practicing. That's good. It's healthy. It's like, that's what I want when I'm practicing. Just a little bit of, of stress and a little bit of pressure and a little bit of, you know, um, 
having to be aware of what's happening. And so now I have four shots left. All I got to do is go two for four on these shots. And, and I'm aware of this a little bit. At least it pops up as like a, like a window on the computer. It's not the main operating system. It's not something I'm super focused on, but I'm, I'm aware of it. And, and, and it's part of, partly intentionally aware of it to create some distraction because I'm going to have these distractions when I play in gambling and tournaments and things. So in front of people. So, so I like this distraction. It's a healthy distraction. It's a, it's an amount of stress and distraction that, that, uh, that I want to practice and I want to train and I want to have to come through and deal with. And so what I do is now I have these four balls and now I chunk the seven, right? And it's like, I hit it over on this side thick and I'm like, dang it. I lost the moment. I did whatever. I chunked the seven and now, now all my stress goes up a tiny bit and I realize, okay, now I need to try to grind these balls in and I need to try to stay present. And so I work through my process and I, um, miss the eight to this side again, chunk it. And these are up here, the eight here, the nine here, eight, nine. And now I'm at, I got to make this 10 to, uh, to get, you know, to get to 80%. If I miss them at 70, which isn't bad, but I want to get 80. So I'm on the 10, I need to get 80. And I realize what happened. The data is there after we'll look at the data after, but, um, now I shoot the 10 and I go backwards and I go back to my, re I revert back to, to, to like my, my, uh, my standard, like overcut, whatever, for whatever reasons, like I said. And so now I'm at 70%, right? And the 10 over here. And now I have really, really, really good data that I'm working with. I can look at it and say, wow, man, um, I made seven in a row and I kind of fell apart at the end. <laughs> and that's my data. And that's fine. That's good to have that data, you know, because we'll show you in the next one more positive, like, uh, yeah, we win data, spoiler. <laughs> but that's like, oh my gosh, I choked data. And so it's fine, like we just need that data because it's good to know that we were under stress and that we, we kind of failed. Like life is all about failing and getting back up and trying again. So we're in a safe environment. We're in our safe zone here. We're in the nest training and, uh, and we're just learning, right? So, so okay, so we got 70%, we had a little choke session at the end there. We got hot and we got out of the moment and we choked. And that's all great information. I want to know that because I'd rather have that happen here than have it happen on a stream or at Derby or gambling or with people watching. It's like, I want these simulations and if I can run these simulations enough, then I find more comfort when I'm under those stressful situations. So that's, that's the reason why I like doing this in training and having some of this, this window up in the background about this you know, results focus. Even though we're process minded, we're process minded. This is just a little bit of results while we're training. And so now we come into the next session. We're like, okay, 60, 70%. And now we miss the one ball and we miss it over. Doesn't even matter now. We just miss it on this side, let's say. So we put the one ball up here, right? And now I'm like, okay, shoot. What am I going to do from here? I got to make like, I can't miss. I can only miss one more shot out of nine. Well, fast forward. And I make nine in a row, okay? And I got 90%. And now I've got all kinds of data. The data that I have is I missed one shot and I ran nine in a row under pressure when I couldn't miss more than one and I got it done and I put down the hammer and I stayed focused and I can look back at it and say, what mindset was I in when I made those nine shots? And I can look back and then I can anchor that mindset and be like, I want to be in that mindset moving forward. Okay. And so on my next shots, now I have, um, that information and that I'm not just a donkey that dogs it all the time. And I have the information that is, I am a donkey that dogged it in my set of 20, but then I came back in my set of 30, like, like a beast. And I'm proud of that. And I can build from that and I can, use that information to feel good about my training. And I can use the other information when I dogged it to give me motivation to try to, you know, handle it and handle the adversity. 
And so I can celebrate my victories and I can handle my adversity. And I'm in this training mode where I'm facing adversity, handling it, getting victories and allowing myself to feel good about it. And so that's what happens through this process. And it's really fun and enjoyable and I love it. And so what happens is now you just go to the next one and you get, you know, likely in this scenario, I'll just, you know, I'll hit like an 80 and I might hit like another 90 or something. And I'm like, okay. And I just work through my process. And so what I learned was which way I have, which way I typically overcut, undercut, and I'm paying attention to that. I'm racking them up so that I can look at that. I'm looking at how I'm handling pressure and how I'm, you know, and my mind is learning the shot and all that stuff. So, so it's a, it's a great process. And so I enjoy this process and this is how I train. And now what I do from there is once I'm through these 50 and I have this data, I know I'm good. I'm averaging 80 through this process. I'm in a good spot. I know the shot. And now I start adding, you know, um, maybe the next go round of 50, I'll do like, you know, the first 20 at high ball. And then I'll do the next 20 with a draw shot. And I'll look to see where I'm going around here. And then I'll do, um, then I'll see which one of these I'm struggling with percentage wise. And I'll add my 10, maybe low is, is higher, is tougher for me. So I add my final 10. I'll go back and hit 10 with high if, if my percentages were lower so I can learn that high shot a little better. So then now I'm 100 shots in, I've hit the ball with cinch, I've hit it with high, I've hit it with low, and now I'm 100 shots in and now I start working with a little bit of spin, side spin, and I start introducing right spin and left spin. And I do the same. I'll hit 10, 20, 30 shots with right until I can get to an 80%. And if I can't get to 80, if I'm stuck at 60, 70, I'll just keep with that spin. And I'll, and, and maybe by the, uh, by the fourth one, the, the set of like 40 or 30 to 40 range, maybe I'll hit an 80% with right. And then I'll be like, okay, cool. I hit 80% with right. And now I'll just prove it. I'll just do one more at 80 and try to get 80% with right spin. And so I'll be into my 150th shot and I'll have hit you know, um, this shot and in my 150th, maybe I started off when I was using right spin and I hit 50%, right? And then I went to 60%. And then in my, my, my group, my third group, maybe I went to 70%. And so I'm starting to learn the shot. And then if I hit 80 on my fourth group, then I just hit 80 on, I, I try to get 80 on my fifth group to prove it. So now I'm 150 shots in, I've hit cinch, I've hit, low, I've hit high, and I've hit left and right, or right, let's say. And then I could hit left on my last session and do the same thing with these numbers and this, this familiarity. And so now I'm 200 shots in, maybe it takes me an hour and a half or something like that. My, I've just exploded my learning mind. I've spent this time dealing with it, playing under a little bit of pressure, simulated pressure kind of thing. And I've had like this awesome session where I've learned that I don't just have to cinch the ball, that I can hit the ball at a very high rate when I'm using side spin, when I'm using low, when I'm using high. And so that is like critical information for me to build up my confidence with that shot. I'm also learning about the same thing with spin. I'm looking and seeing where my misses are. I'm racking those misses are and I'm adjusting for the spin. And Sharavari has a has a Sharivari, how do you ever say his name? He has a great video on side spin and he he really goes into like when you aim and you have to aim away from the pocket to, to deal with deflection and spin. And so it's a very recent video he has, you could check it out. Um, but it's awesome, but that's basically what I'm doing in my brain is I'm figuring out where do I need to aim and sometimes I'm aiming outside the pocket and that's fine. And I'm also, what this allows me to do is to quiet my mind so that I'm able to pick a side of the pocket that I'm working on and working with and that's critical too because that will pay dividends down the road because when I'm playing I really am looking at a side of the pocket most of the time and that allows me that opens up my angles and opens up me opens up my game so I don't have to use as much spin because I can use a thinness or thickness to move my cue ball around and and uh, it's really great like that's down the road stuff but that's it's uh, all that gets developed through doing this 
that's that's where that comes from that, that knowledge and that 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 uh, ability so so that's it hopefully um hopefully this made sense hopefully you guys enjoyed it um you know like i said it's not gonna be for everybody uh some people are probably gonna think it's boring or it's whatever but this is how i have built up my game and did everything that I said at the beginning of the video and I feel very strongly about this. I train like this all the time. I'm teaching people at the club here how to train with like this. And you know, the things that are important are racking these in order because that will tell you, that gives you the, the proper data. You know, if you just rack them in any order, it's like, well, what, when did I hit that shot? Or when did I miss that shot? Did I miss it early? Did I miss it late? Whatever, like we want those balls racked in order so we can gather all the data and see how we're doing early and late and in the middle and did we lose focus or whatever and you need those balls in order in order to uh, get that data so people are out at the club when i try to tell them that they're always like you know they'll grab like stripes and they'll <laughs> shoot 10 shots and i'm like i'm like please please shoot them in order please one through ten come on let's just i'm trying to like you know encourage them and people think that i'm some sort of psycho which maybe i am but or uh what do you call it a uh OCD and it's like I'm not being OCD like there is a method to this madness and this is my methodology and that's why I want to share with you guys so all right hope you enjoyed this one uh the 50 80 training awesome and uh yeah thanks for checking these videos out I don't know like like the video let me know that that, that give me a comment you know I don't need you to like I don't want you to like stroke my ego I don't need any of that I just want to know that that you find this helpful that's it you know and even if you don't even if you don't find this helpful there are people that do so i know people find this helpful so i'm going to keep doing them i don't care if two people find it helpful i'm going to keep doing them i enjoy doing them and so yeah awesome and uh if you're in town come out to the club check us out it's awesome it's a beautiful place we're training our butts off and uh tuesday thursday night super fun it's just awesome. It's just, I can't say it enough. Like, it's awesome. It's just such a loving, encouraging environment. And there's just enough stress layered in where it's super cool. At the end, we do a run together. Everybody loves it. I love it. And uh, yeah, it's just, this is such a great place. I just want you guys to come out and experience it if you live close. And if you're out of town, hit me up on mess Messenger or something. And uh, we'll have you in for a visit. And that's it. I just appreciate it everybody supporting us and watching these videos and coming to the club and yeah it's awesome i'll just keep trying to help people and uh yeah just move forward so awesome thanks guys and gals we'll talk soon